For decades, the European Union granted preferential access to its markets for sugar-producing countries, including Belize. In 2006, under pressure from the World Trade Organization, the European Union adopted a reform of the sugar regime, which would dissolve previously existing trade agreements, likely resulting in a significant price reduction for sugar protocol countries. Recognizing the needs of certain sugar protocol countries to adapt to the new market conditions, the EU introduced the Accompanying Measures for Sugar to assist with the adaptation process through development assistance. Since then, the AMS has supported a series of development projects in Belize, focused on improving sugar industry competitiveness, promoting economic diversification, and developing productive and social infrastructure. Through the accompanying measures for sugar, the European Union donated 72 million euro, equal to 160 million Belize dollars, which benefited primarily Belizeans living in the sugar belt. Quality and productivity were defined as the primary drivers for the success of the Belize sugar industry as it enters the open market. The AMS therefore took action to improve these areas along the value chain, from field to mill. This film will touch on the following AMS-funded programs and projects which contributed to the improvement of the Belize sugar industry. One of the most important competitiveness actions was the institutional strengthening of the Sugar Industry Research and Development Institute, known locally as CIRTI. CIRTI has in turn provided support and technical services to the industry, contributed to better monitoring for improved cane quality and improved coordination among industry stakeholders. Theory, cane farmers participated in farmer field schools, which taught them about improved planting, harvesting, and husbandry practices. A key development has been the sugar industry farmer field school program, pioneered by Sirdi in Belize. I have been attending the Escuela de Campo or the farmers field schools, and I have finished through the course of that, and many other farmers have, have done it. What I have learned is that um, we can introduce new varieties to our fields with more sugar content. We have learned to um, use fertilizers more effectively on the ground. We have also learned to um, do the no reburning practices. We do not do the second reburning. We leave that in the fields so that it can um, deteriorate and thus create a, a better um, atmosphere for our fields. An integrated approach to pest and disease management was also developed, complete with a new entomology and pathology lab, the first of its kind in Belize. This program is intended to provide farmers with solutions to manage sugarcane pests and disease. Mostly the farmers used to rely on insecticides. And it's worrying because they get different type of insecticides, different dosages they use, and they mostly contaminate the, the environment and themselves. We, we teach them how to use, to protect themselves, read the labels properly, and use the correct dosage and the handling of, of the, the pesticide. But that is only if, after a monitoring, it says to use pesticide. The diseases of the, of the, of the sugar stocks, they are dealt with, with the, according with the varieties. That is why we plant and, and change varieties that are, are not susceptible to the diseases. Through the AMS, a sugarcane replanting program was established to support cane farmers in northern Belize. With support from the Caribbean Development Bank and the Development Finance Corporation of Belize, Farmers were provided loans to assist with the replanting of their cane fields, a practice which is often overlooked and contributes to low yield. This in turn led to increased productivity and sugar cane quality for the participating farmers. 
gracias por el programa, porque yo no tenía las finanzas para sembrar. Y eh, a través de DFC conseguí un préstamo y pude sembrar toda esta planta, que son 36 acres de caña. CRD has also been key in the development of CIMIS, a sugar industry management information system, which will facilitate improvements to farming practices and harvest planning through the sharing of information among industry stakeholders. The sugar industry management information system that was launched in 2013, the objective was a centralized location for the, for the um, collection, storage, analysis and, and production of reports, meaning management of the, of the industry database. So, um, and in order for that to happen, it had to go to something which is much bigger than a GIS system. So we moved into the information system, which today is seen by stakeholders as the heart of the industry. The CMIS, well, it's a tool, one of the best tools for record keeping and mitigating and, and guiding you, guiding you with your entire business. And, and, and we have been using it that way. Another action of the AMS is the introduction of a new method of cane quality testing within the Belize sugar industry. By utilizing near-infrared technology, sugar cane arriving at the mill can now be tested in a matter of minutes. Currently, with the introduction of the near-infrared, we will be using high advanced technology to determine a lot of parameters on cane, cane quality, that will help us um, to better understand what is happening in the, in the, in the field. The power is in the information that the near-infrared technology generates for the growers. It strengthens our capacity to make a better harvesting plan, to understand, to understand the nature of the different varieties that we grow and when they are fully mature. A grower can consider that information in his decision-making, perhaps make improvements to his practices and improve the cane quality of his future deliveries to the factory. We will we'll be able to do rehabilitation with, with new fields, knowing what varieties to put in, at what time of the year we need to plant it, and what time of the year we need to harvest it. The most important aspect is uh, the sugar is produced in the cane fields, but it is basically extracted at the mill. Everything we do at the field impacts what happens at the mill. Finally, the development of a drainage master plan is underway for the sugar belt. Sugarcane doesn't need too much water, doesn't need too little water. The current use of LiDAR technology for the topographical surveys of key areas in the sugar belt will be useful for the development of an irrigation and drainage master plan for the Northern Sugar Belt. Now we're using two Cumulus One drones and doing a survey over the entire area. We use that imagery in conjunction with very high detailed ground survey data to compile a high detailed digital elevation model so the uh, drainage designers can, can have a look at the, the watersheds and the natural drainage areas and try and develop a plan to move the excess water off out of the cane fields into the natural drainage systems. This should have a massive benefit for the sugarcane yield and quality in the area. The better drained the fields are, the, the higher the yield, will, the yield will be and the better the quality. Our quality is indeed uh, properly recognized in CARICOM and the world. Um, and that is precisely because our farmers have been doing and paying a lot of attention to good agricultural practices. But in a whole, I think we are, we are on target and doing good in terms of quality.